Before the Super Bowl, they sang the song Lift Every Voice and Sing, which is often referred to as the Black National Anthem. Some people didn't like this, like this person Vince, who wrote to the NFL on their Facebook page and said, Black National Anthem? Really? There is only one national anthem. Don't like it? Then maybe it's time to make the USA not your home. Comedian Ben Palmer does what he does best in another example of comedians owning conservatives. So I made my own National Football League Facebook page and responded and said, we're sorry to hear this and would like to make it right. We can send you a revised copy of the Super Bowl without anything black, but unfortunately there won't be any quarterbacks. And he wrote back and said, I worked and then took a nap. Who won again? That's funny you think I have a problem with the quarterbacks because they're black. Great reading comprehension. Thanks for letting us know about your nap. We are happy to hear that you are now woke. He said, not woke and never will be. Enjoy this little run while you can. This ridiculous BS will soon be coming to an end. Now go back to the herd and have a nice day. Thank you for lifting your voice and singing with us today. Brilliant as always, but it wasn't just Vince. I don't dig doing this dual national anthem. Fox News host Will Kane, who got his ass handed to him by Bamani Jones on his own damn show when talking NASCAR and Bubba Wallace, hates the idea of a black national anthem. What is going on here? But he would not be alone. New rule, the only time there should be two national anthems is when the other team is from Canada. Bill Maher would do so as well, adding to more stupidity that we already knew centrists had. To be clear, before we move on, Will Kane has made many very stupid points in his broadcasting career. He has said healthcare is not a human right. He has said black lives do not matter. When Kyrie Irving prompted and invoked thought about leading a player-led only league, he labeled it, Kane did, segregation. He praised ivermectin as a miracle drug. He appeared to back Kanye West in lieu of the Chicago hip-hop artist's anti-Semitism. He has found allies in Glenn Beck and Bill Shine, the former Fox executive who covered up Roger Ailes' misdeeds against women in the workplace. He sucks. Onward. Colorado Congresswoman and pro-insurrectionist Lauren Boebert, Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, who spoke at white supremacist events with Nick Fuentes and many more. They love Chris Stapleton, though. However, did Greene take into account... Stapleton said during the summer protests of 2020, there's a very broad awakening that's come about. It's time for me to listen. It's time for other folks to listen. I thought we were living in a different country, he adds. That's 100% real. The country that I thought we were living in was a myth. After being asked if he supports the Black Lives Matter movement, Stapleton responded without hesitation. Do I think black lives matter? Absolutely. I don't know how you can think they don't. That is what this is really about. Policing, who is and isn't really American, they are used to being able to dictate to the rest of us what is and isn't American. The existence of a black national anthem is the assertion of black agency, a declaration of pride and autonomy from white power structures that Republicans cannot countenance because they cannot even countenance the legal equality of black Americans. The song, by the way, is hopeful about an American future, but it does not trade in American myths of white Christian chosenness or innocence. More than a competing national anthem, it is a more sober, more honest vision of America, a journey toward an unrealized future rather than a defense of an innocent past. That from Robert P. Jones, head of the Public Religion Research Institute. Acknowledging the social equality of black people is out of the question for Republicans. Barack Obama couldn't be a legit president for the same reason. Lift every voice and sing can't be considered an American anthem. To acknowledge as much would be to acknowledge the social equality of black Americans and the Republican Party is not willing to do that. The addition of other patriotic music became controversial. This is no accident. A song beloved and sacred to many, if not most, black Americans that reflects on their experiences in and love of this country and their history, which is by extension its history, infuriates conservatives and Republicans because it reminds them that this country is not only theirs. 